camera and if you want to take down your videos then I get a less glitchy one of these so the choice is you can take notes now as we speak because you've got the hard copies there or you can wait for the video to the video to go up and we'll be fine so here's the rectangle then uh, many of you are stumped by this that's too little isn't it many of you found this difficult because you thought well if you're 1.5 across you've got to be three no we, you can't assume that it's not drawn accurately and even though the height looks twice as big as the width you can't assume that because you've got to read that okay you've got to read it now if you're if you're rustling a microphone stop that and um mute yourself mute yourself whoever you are thank you all right so i've got to work out ultimately the area of this shape well there's the answer but that won't get you all the marks it might get you two marks if that um, I've got to work out the width across here and the height across here so if you're given a picture the wise thing to do is to put the numbers on the picture that you know I know each of these are 1.5 yeah each of these are 1.5 and I've got five of them Sorry, Viraj, I can't see. I can't. You raised your hand, but. <laughs> Who's that, Ethan? No, he's not going to be in the Zoom meeting. I told him. So, thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, so she has disturbed my lesson now, hasn't it? So, I've got five lots of 1.5 which comes to 7.5. So I know the length across here is 7.5 centimeters. Now this is the difficult bit, the clever bit. If it's 7.5 right across here, then I've actually got three lengths of these rectangles, which are all lying down side by side. I've got three of them that must come to the length of 7.5 as well, because they start in the same place and finish in the same place. So if I take this length of 7.5 and divide by three, I get the true length of each rectangle, which is 2.5, not three. All right. Once I know that, I can say 2.5. 1.5, 1.5, 2.5, and what I have now is a 7 times 8 rectangle, and that comes to 60 centimeters squares of area. All right? This was difficult. It was impossible to mark. Those of you who use the Word document and try to say um, Kathy's top right, bottom left, I, I can't do that. So if you can't, if you're going to use a Word document, you can't describe it. What you should do is to do what uh, Viraj has done. What he did today was he did it all in his in his book as normal. And then he took a photo of that work and I could easily mark it because he sent it to me in PDF, which is brilliant. Is that right, Viraj? I did that for you. Okay, so just to confirm, so yeah, that works really well. If, if you find it really awkward to try and put numbers, letters, uh, calculations, work in your book. I'm happy with that. Um, there we go. So that's the first one. Now, let's have a look here. This is like a practice grid, but I managed to get it right in one go. Um, ben is northeast of Adam. So northeast is in that direction. So if Adam is here, say Ben has got to be there, hasn't he? So Ben is northeast from Adam. We've done compasses before, um, so you should be able to do it. So Ben is in that direction from Adam. Okay. Kath uh, is east of Ben. Well, that's easy. Well, if Ben's there, east is this way to the left of Ben. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I'm so dumb. So. So. I don't know who Sophie D is waiting for a meeting. Uh, I don't know who Sophie D is. I'm so sorry. I don't know who that is. Oh, Sophie, go away. Okay, well, he's not going to do that. We're busy now. Um, wow, I had no idea. So now that's just my lesson twice. Okay, so Kath is east of Ben. If Ben is there, east is in this direction. There we go. So Kath is east of Ben. I've got three in the correct position. Darren is southeast of Emily. So if Emily is up there, then southeast is this direction here as follows. So that's where Darren's going to be. Um, have, I, have we mentioned Emily at all? 
Yeah, if Darren's going to be southeast of Emily, then Emily's got to be in that top um, left corner. She should be northwest of Darren. So if you look at all these three descriptions, it's very difficult. You've got to try and get these and get three marks. So this is like a, a rough answer to, you know, a rough grid to practice on. You don't have to write their names. Just go E, B, C, A, D. That's, that's it. All right. Um, some of you still got your microphone on, but you've got to, you've got to turn it off. Thanks. So you listen to me the first time. So the diagram shows a rectangle on a centimetre grid. So rectangle on a centimetre grid. I can see it's got a perimeter of seven, no, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yep, it's definitely got a perimeter of fourteen. Why is it not possible to draw a square of perimeter 14 and somebody mentioned the graph paper is not big enough well that's really silly isn't it it's not about the size of the paper it's the fact that you cannot divide 14 by 4 you cannot you can't draw 14 you kind of you can't go you can go 3 3 3 3 that's a square that comes to 12 but you can't get whole numbers to come to 14. So I wrote down 14 is not divisible by 4 to give a whole number. That would never work. It's not about the size of the graph paper, honestly. Here's another rectangle grid, and its area is clearly 2 times 6, 12 centimetres squares. Why is it not possible to draw a square of area 12 centimetres squares? Answer. 12 is not a square number. You can go 4 by 3. Well, that's not a square. That's a rectangle. You just can't do it because the square number before 12 is 9 and the square number after 12 is 16. 12 is not a square number. Therefore, you can't draw it with whole centimeter squares. Done. That's all there is to it. Um, they give an example what a pentomino is. It's it's clearly five squares joined together. Uh, this clearly doesn't work this because ends will just like fall off. So all these are possibles, and many of you did not read the description. It must be um, a five block shape. It must have no lines of symmetry, and it must have order of rotational symmetry too. All right. And the only one I can think of is this one. You may, not, you may draw it differently around, it doesn't matter, but look at this. If I go anti-clockwise, if I stab it there with my compass and draw around it, okay, you just imagine it, this will, this will move over to here, and the bottom part will move to the top. And then it goes back on itself. So that is order rotational symmetry too. You've got to obey both things to get it right, okay? So no lines of symmetry, bam, a mark, and also order two, okay? Question nine. Many of you misunderstood and misread this as well. Um, small square tiles are all the same size. Here they are. They don't mention the colours. Now they mention the colours. They are grey or white. So white, white, grey, grey. I've got it. 25 of the small tiles are used to make a large tile as shown. So 25 of these to make a great big one. English. How many small white tiles do you need to make one big large tile? And many of you wrote down 25. I don't see 25 white tiles. I see 16. 4, 4, 4, 4. 16 white tiles to make a big one. The length of each small tile is 20 centimetres. <clears throat> I want to prove that X is 1 metre. Well, I've got 5 times 20, which is 100 centimetres. That equals 1 metre. Done it. One of you wrote down 100 divided by 20 equals 5. That doesn't help because I want to arrive at the answer of 100 centimetres and then say that equals a metre. All right. So this is the correct working, not any combination of any other sum. That's correct. Again, many of you misunderstood this. <coughs> Large tiles, not the little tiny ones, large tiles are used to cover a rectangular wall, maybe in a kitchen or a bathroom. The wall measures five by three meters. Well, five by three meters will give you 15 meter squares, which means you need 15 large tiles. True? Yeah, you need 15 large tiles. Now, here's the English. How many small white tiles do you need? Well, here's the thing. 
I go back to this one here, you can see there are 16 white tiles in the big, big tile. Okay, just like over here, 16. Remember, it's the same question. Some of the information trickles through right the way down throughout the question. So I've got 16 small white tiles to make a big tile, which is a metre square worth of area. Okay, that's what this part B was about. So how many do I need? Well, every large tile has got 16 little white ones, and I've got 15 large tiles. 16 times 15 is 240 little white tiles to make 15 great big white tiles. It's not 240 meters squared or centimeters squared, it's just 240 of them. All right, what's next? Then it's the mark scheme. That's all there is to it, okay? Um, okay, so when you do the work, I do the work as well. I save it, I go over it, I give you a chance to take notes, I'll do you a video in case you're absent or because you want to think about it a little bit more, that's, that's fine. But for now, I just want to sign that off as done.